belt. Oh God, I hope it is. We got our parts, our engine oil squirters. Showed up about two weeks ago. Both Robin and I have been extremely busy. Well, maybe Robin. I've been busy, uh, but just, yeah. So it's time to now, sorry, the camera's moving around. It's time to now get this Hemi built. So we are on our way out to Bullock Engine Services in Maidstone, Saskatchewan. And uh, I'm telling you, if you're in the area, hell, if you're in the local, like, three to 400 kilometer range, it's worth coming here for the quality. And honestly, his price is right on point for your average Joe. <laughs> um, anyways, guys, we are on our way out there. We're gonna be putting this Hemi back together. Our clearance checks are done. I'm gonna have them show one piece that I missed on engine clearances because I missed it on the mains and we'll go from there. So quick recap for those that forgot what's going on. We had two oil squirters that uh, were, one was questionable, one was definitely shot. So we're got some new oil squirters. So if you're looking for the oil squirter part number, if you wanna just buy four, there it is. They they do carry them in, in stock and also Mopar no car. And uh, it was about a week and a half delay to get them. Like I said, we've been over a month since we last worked on this, but that's okay. It is a balmy minus 40 fucking something outside. And uh, I'm, I, it's, it's cool in here, but it is just comfortable enough to work in for me in a t-shirt. So we're gonna get going. Uh, we'll probably, like I said, maybe just do one clearance check just to show you what, how we did a clearance check on the main, because apparently I missed that filming that somewhere. I don't know if we just, time got away on us or what, but anyways, we should, we should by the end of this have a fully built Hemi. We should, barring no problems. Good to know. That. So the grooves right there, you see the relief. The scalp looks like a little scallop cut out of there. That's where the hockey stick end of the this goes in there with the groove, with the oil grooves facing the crankshaft. We'll slip in there. It's amazing how their cats can go. Where's he now? He's up on the shelf. Oh, okay. 
There's nothing bad. Oh yeah. I, was gonna say, I, I expected his face to be poking out of the ball in the block or something. <laughs> I just I just saw the movement of the corner. Like I have the one video yeah. of him literally jumping onto the blanket and then the blanket just slowly dropping <laughs> to the ground and I laughed. Yeah. Because these bearings are coated, we don't want to touch them with our fingers. That's why I'm wearing gloves. Woohoo! <laughs> Guys, you have no clue how much. <laughs> we are that much closer. This is all old stuff. This is all the old stuff. And this will be hardware. Yeah. We are so close. Yeah. <laughs>
Now we get to top boat gap orientation. <laughs> so, basically, I'd like to go. Everyone's got their own theory. There's been articles and books and arguing, and then someone's going to tell me I'm wrong. But you go, I normally go like this, right away, just right beside, like the, the, the it's basically at the edge of the skirt on the thrust side. I line one up there at the corner, on this one here on the opposite corner, and then the, on the oil ring normally doesn't matter as long as it's not in line with either one of those two gaps. Biggest um, thing, they don't want to be lined up. And also, if everyone thinks that that's where they stay, they actually will do, they'll actually uh, be doing laps around the piston when it's turning. And if you turn an engine over on the stand enough times, okay. you'll actually see your ring, you'll see your ring gaps have moved from where you mark them. So your rings are floating in normal operation. Right. And I believe, issues. I believe there was a video that actually yeah. showed that was true. I'm sure there's something out there that, that is. I've, I've seen it personally. We did one one time just to, just to see if we could, but yeah. Guys, that is eight pistons in. Eight rods in, because you need rods to make the pistons go up and down. It's funny, for us, the longer the build goes on, we keep on, uh, you know, we're, we're talking less and less, but one thing you want to check when you're putting together is your rod side clearance. There's a spec for it, but generally speaking, you're just a little bit of rod side clearance. And obviously, when you put, every time you put one in, it should basically be the same amount of drag on uh, on the motor. So yeah, basically this one moves nice and free. You can turn it with your hand. It's pretty, that's ideal. And yeah, torque them all up, torque turn them. Only one piston gave us grief and it was the second one. Second one gave us yeah. grief. It just I, popped out a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, when you tap them in, you just got to make sure that they're they go in smooth. Well, yeah. guys, we are so close. I I guess the next step Don't is. Jinx it. I know, Don't jinx it. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I guess the next step would be we put a cam in this. Yep. So. Let's do it. Okay, cam timing time. Because camis are cam timed a little bit different, and it's not hard, guys. It's just you got to pay attention. So we have Mark. What we do is this one here. Of course, our engine's upside down right now, which might be confusing. So basically, this is going to be pointing down, which is actually up in this in this particular spot. That goes up there, and then our chain is going to straddle this. So of course, you get your marks. You get your you got to figure out if you're marked on the on, in any application. You're marked on your tooth, or whether you're marked on the valley. So we find our marked chain right here, and that will be straddling the mark there. Like that. And then this one here has a marked valley, so we'll only have one mark on the link for here. And we're gonna mark that with a paint pen. Just give me a sec. Okay, so we read the instructions for the uh, earlier Gen Hemi. <laughs> so now, a little bit different. So basically, uh, we had them backwards. Uh, it ended up being the same because the, this Basically, the way it works out is that it'll, uh, it's the chain was just the other way, but in the book, it does say for the marks that the cam has the two marks and it rides on either side, so it rides in between those two, and then the then the crank has the mark directly on the dot. So that makes sense. So slip that onto there. Oh, turn it a little bit again. Just like so. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we didn't we didn't move either shaft like they were both in the right place, but the uh, yeah for some reason we for some reason read the other one and it uh, was a little bit different. So yeah, fucked. Yeah, and the plastic we want to talk like deceiving. Same bolts. Same bolts. Like observe four identical bolts, and this is a twenty one foot pound twenty one foot pounds twenty one foot pounds on that. Yeah, but through these steel sleeves, and this is one hundred and six inch pounds so on aluminum. Uh, that's kind of odd. I like yeah. So we're, we're scratching our heads at that one, but we're, we're almost say, there. So. <laughs> kind of awesome. You guys want to hold this? No. Holy fuck. Oh, baby. Ah! What if it flew apart? <laughs> <laughs> if it flew okay, apart? That would just be another step to this Hemi build. That Absolutely. Just every step has gone I, I this way. I expected it to, man. Just, <laughs> just, just the way things have been going. <laughs> One step closer. Oil pump on. Yes, we realize we have to pull this off to put the oil pan on. Front cover is on. We uh, will be moving forward with putting the damper on. I went with an ATI super damper and anybody pro charging or supercharging even turbocharging 
you should pin this kit, pin your damper on a Hemi. See, to be honest, even on an LS, you should pin it. They will walk out on you. And ATI sells a really good kit, like really cheap too. I shouldn't say cheap. Hundred dollars in, in comparison to what we've spent is nothing. Cheap so, insurance. We're getting there. It's coming home. It tried to fight us the whole way today. Like literally from the cam bolt, like the bolt to hold the cam in that was missing, to the O-ring for the oil pump that we couldn't find. Uh, photo bomb. Better than an <laughs> ass crack photo bomb. <laughs> Hey guys, well thank you for watching the video. I'm sorry, we're not 100% done. Um, we're 15, almost 16 minutes in and I'm going to do another video. I'm not trying to milk this guys, but I got a bonus video coming hopefully by the end of this week on installing an ATI damper and pinning. So we're gonna do an ATI pinning and ATI damper install. Now this isn't in place, this is on the crank. It gives you a really good visual for those that are struggling with how the ATI pinning kit works, because it's bizarre. But it works really well when it's done right. Anyways guys, thanks for all the support. This was part four, final assembly. We have a Hemi to put in. Holy shit, we have a Hemi to put in. It's been a long time coming. If you liked the video, like, subscribe, share. Please do me a huge favor and share this video to any of your Emmy guys. High performance Rams, Ram forums, 392 performance videos, like anything. Honestly, this applies to any third gen Hemi. There's not a ton of good high quality Hemi rebuild videos out there, especially on the 6.4s. Guys doing cam bearings, forging 6.4s, all that. Be ready guys, we are going to have a lit 2021. I mean, absolute lit because that cam is spicy, the Pro Charger is spicy, and if I'm not happy, I will get the D1X upgrade for it, and we will make this thing go fast. Thank you again. If you like the video, like, subscribe, and please do me a huge favor and share. I'll see you on the next one. Make sure you watch that video there. If you haven't watched that video there, awesome. If you haven't subscribed, click that button there. Take care. Stay running off-road.